Hello, beautiful people on the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have for you the last of my travel vlogs from my recent vacation to England. In this video, you are going to see our trip to Haworth, where the Bronte Parsonage is located, and also to the spa town of Harrogate. I always thought it was pronounced Harrogate, but then when I was actually in England, I heard some people say Harrogate and some people say Harrogate. So I'm not sure which one is correct. Any British people out there, feel free to correct me in the comment section. Politely correct me, of course. So we will be getting to all of that shortly. I will tell you a little bit about what we did. Also, the Bronte Parsonage is a little bit difficult to get to, so I'm going to tell you what I did. So if you go to the north of England and you want to take a trip there, you can have a little bit of direction. The first thing I'm going to show you though actually is a dinner that my father and I had. I don't have any videos of it, I just have photos, but I was talking to him on the phone last night and he really wanted this to be included in one of the vlogs. So I'm doing it for dad, hopefully he you enjoy too. As I mentioned in my previous vlog, when we were in York, we were staying at this hotel called The Grand. Fantastic hotel, one of the nicest hotels I've personally ever stayed in. And the day that we went to Castle Howard, when we got back from Castle Howard for dinner that night, we ate at the hotel in their restaurant Legacy, which is a tasting menu only restaurant. Only has like eight to 10 tables in the entire place. It was really, really fantastic. It was the only tasting menu I've ever had. And so I felt very high class and sophisticated. But per dad's request, I'm gonna show you all the photos that I took of our meal and tell you about what we ate during this dinner. Hopefully you enjoy. So like I said, we had the tasting menu. Everything was really good. First, the duck ganache with apricot and lemon thyme. Parker House roll with cultured butter and herb butter. A Whitby crab with avocado and calamansi. Squid ink tortellini with lobster foam and fennel. A salt baked celery yak with summer truffle and hazelnut pesto. Butter poached turbo with asparagus and champagne sauce. A spring Yorkshire lamb with aubergine. A creme fraiche sorbet with lime. And finally, the grand honey, which was like a panna cotta. So that was our dinner at Legacy. It was really enjoyable, very fun. Not something that you do every day, or at least not something I do every day. Now I will get into my footage from our trip to Hallworth. Now, like I said, I'm going to tell you how I got to Hallworth from York. So maybe that'll help you if you ever want to do the same thing. I read online that you could take a train from York to either Hebden Bridge or Cayley, I'm not sure if that's how you say it, and from there you could get a bus so that takes you to Haworth. I decided to book the train from York to Hebden Bridge because there was a direct route with no stops. I believe if I wanted to go to Cayley, we would have had to stop in Leeds and change trains. So I decided to go with Hebden Bridge just to make it easier on myself. Then when we got to Hebden Bridge, outside of the train station, there's a bus depot, and that is where you pick up the bus to Hallworth. It is the B3 bus, also known as the Bronte bus. And when I was reading online, I was worried, you know, is the bus gonna be hard to find? But let me tell you, no, it's not. The bus depot is right outside the Hebden Bridge train station. And the bus literally says, Bronte bus on it. So you can't miss it. There was also a very nice elderly English gentleman who saw us looking at the bus schedule. I guess he realized that we were some confused American tourists. And so he confirmed to us that we were in the right place. Thank you to that man uh, for, you know, taking pity on us and giving us some reassurance. 
But all that being said, getting to Hogwarts was a lot easier than I feared. Reading online, I felt like it wasn't very clear, but once I actually did it and I was actually there, it was very easy to figure out. It is a bit of a long trek, so you are going to spend a lot of time on transportation, but if you're a big Bronte fan like I am, Jane Eyre is one of my favorite books, I do think it's worth going to Hallworth. Also, the bus ride is pretty scenic. I don't take any videos because, you know, videos taken through a window just never really come out. But the bus ride takes you through so much of the northern English countryside. Lots of farms, lots of cows, lots of sheep, lots of steep cliffs and sweeping views. So it is a very nice bus ride, even if it is a little long. So we arrived in Haworth on a cloudy but dry afternoon, and I have to say, Haworth is absolutely adorable. It is so cute and just has that quintessentially British vibe. The main street is on a steep hill, so get ready to do some walking if you decide to visit, but it is extremely picturesque and just how I hoped it would be. There's lots of little shops, tea rooms, and things like that. You could visit the pub that Branwell Bronte used to go drinking in if you are interested in that. This is the church where Patrick Bronte, the Bronte sister's father, was the vicar. None of the Brontes were actually born in Haworth, but it is where they spent a majority of their lives after their father took up his position there. They lived in the parsonage, and it was continued to use as a home for the vicar after all of the Brontes died, but was eventually purchased and turned into a museum. It's now replicated to look sort of like how it would have when the Brontes were actually living there. And they do have a lot of items that did belong to the family inside the museum. There were six Bronte siblings in total, all of whom died relatively young. Patrick Bronte outlived his wife and all of his children, which is really sad to think about. Mariah and Elizabeth were the two oldest, but they died while they were still girls. The school Mariah, Elizabeth, and Charlotte attended had pretty dismal conditions, and it's believed to be the inspiration for Lowood in the novel Jane Eyre. Charlotte was the third sibling, and then I believe it was Charlotte, Branwell, Emily, and then Anne, who was the baby. Branwell, their only brother, had a failed career as a portrait artist, and some of the portraits he painted are on display in the Parsonage Museum. They also have items like this artist box that belonged to Emily, all three of the sisters' writing desks, and items like Anne's embroidered handkerchief, which you just saw a couple clips ago. All three Bronte sisters are, of course, extremely famous Victorian-era novelists nowadays. I have read a book by each of them, and I am interested in reading more from Charlotte and Anne. Emily only wrote Wuthering Heights, of course. All of the sisters, like I said, died relatively young, I believe. Emily and Anne were both still in their 20s, and then Charlotte was in her late 30s. Emily and Anne, I think, died from tuberculosis, I want to say, and Charlotte died during pregnancy, possibly from hypermeris gravidarum, which is extreme morning sickness. It's the same thing that the Princess of Wales suffered from during pregnancy. As for their brother Branwell, he was the first out of those four to die. I believe his exact cause of death is not certain, but he was also an alcoholic and a potential opium addict, so of course that did not help his health any. After leaving the Parsonage Museum, we went to go enjoy some lunch in Haworth. 
We actually went to a cafe that the kind English gentleman who gave us directions had recommended. Shout out to him once again. And I made sure to get some Victoria sponge cake because I hadn't had any since Scotland. Then we went into the church where Patrick Bronte was the vicar. There is a memorial stone for the entire family and there was a tour guide in there talking to some people and he leaned over to me and went you're standing on them right now because they're buried under the church floor so sorry Brontes that I stood on your graves I assure you no disrespect was intended you're literary geniuses rest in peace Now I'm going to show you the footage from our day in Harrogate slash Harrogate. Don't know how to pronounce it. One thing I will say about this before diving into the clips is that I purchased a duos ticket from York to Harrogate and back. And basically this is a special ticket for two people traveling together. And it allows you to travel without a set departure and return time. You can choose to depart and return on a number of eligible trains. All you have to do is just make sure the two of you are traveling together. But I thought that was a really great thing because it gave us some flexibility in our day that was really appreciated. We just went to Harrogate, we saw what there was to see, and when we were ready to go back, we went back. It was really easy, no big deal. So Harrogate slash Harrogate, don't know how to pronounce it, is famous for being a Victorian spa town. Rich people used to flock there in droves because they believed that the water could heal a variety of ailments. And actually it was sulfur water in the Royal Pump Room Museum, which you see here. They have a container with the sulfur water in it, and you can take the lid off and smell it. Absolutely vile. Ter terrible, terrible. I don't know how people were able to stomach this stuff. And their doctors might tell them to drink it three times a day. I don't know how they were able to swallow it. It smells so bad. The story I learned at the Royal Pump Room Museum in Harrogate was that Alex of Hesse, the granddaughter of Queen Victoria and future ill-fated Tsarina of Russia, was staying in Harrogate while she was still engaged to Tsar Nicholas II. And the couple she was staying with had just had twins the week before. So Alex says to them, oh my gosh, you should name them Nicholas and Alex, and I will be their godmother. And the couple just agreed to this, christened them Nicholas and Alex, and Princess Alex bought them a Fabergé baby spoon, which she sent back from Russia. Something about that story just tickled me. Like she volunteered herself to be their godmother, said, name them after me and my future husband. And this couple was just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Afterwards, we went to the Valley Gardens. I saw these ducks. I don't know why, but I just get excited whenever I see a duck. I am still a five-year-old girl at heart. But the Valley Gardens is basically this really large park with lots of flower beds in it. Back in Victorian times, it's where people would go after their spa treatments to ride around in their carriages, listen to music, and just be seen just doing their rich people things, you know? I think they still do outdoor shows in the Valley Garden sometimes for the residents of Harrogate. There was this little Japanese style garden here that was opened by the Japanese ambassador. And nowadays it's just a very nice, large, peaceful park. There were lots of people out walking their dogs. Just a nice, you know, green space to hang out in, in the city. 
you know, like I said, it is really weird to imagine that all these rich Victorians were flocking here to drink sulfur water, somehow thinking it was going to heal all of their ailments. You know, it sounds phony to me, but let's be real. Even nowadays in the 21st century, we've all seen those people on the internet who somehow still don't believe in science and are telling you that all of this, like, oh, it's these essential oils, they're going to heal you. You don't need a doctor. Just use this. So I guess we as a society really cannot get on our high horses about the Victorians coming here to drink sulfur water. Like, the 19th century had Victorians and their sulfur water, and the 21st century has crunchy moms on Instagram. Okay, people never change, you know? And that's something that I love about history. <laughs> After our walk around the Valley Gardens, we popped into a tea shop for some lunch. We had some sandwiches and I had another piece of Victoria sponge cake because the one that I had in Hallworth was a bit disappointing and I'm happy to say the second piece was much better. And then we kind of just walked around the shopping area. I don't really have any footage of that, but we popped into some shops downtown. There was a Waterstones, so of course we went to Waterstones. I've never seen a Waterstones that I didn't want to go into and that was pretty much our day. There was also an art gallery that we popped into, but it was really a bust. <laughs> Luckily it was free, but there really was nothing interesting to see there. They were having a modern art exhibit, which was not our vibe, so. I think that's pretty much it. This is it for my recap of my recent trip to England with my father. This was my belated graduation gift from my father. So thanks again, Dad. I had a really good time and I think you did too. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a memorable rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you next time.